Welcome back to the Deep Dive Series, where each and every episode we take a look at a different NFL team and come up with a realistic outcome and prediction for them going into the 2022 NFL season. Of course, we wrap this sucker up with a 2023 NFL mock draft based on my predictions. That should be expected Friday. Hopefully, I'll get my uh, top 200 big board out this week as well. Unfortunately, I'm a little under the weather today. I don't know what's up. But, uh, hey, the grind the grind continues. But today, we talk about the Los Angeles Chargers. I expect a lot of great things from this squad, and there's a lot of reasons to be excited. So let's go ahead, do the nitty-gritty, and start by looking at the offense as, hey, Joe Lombardi, I thought, did a wonderful job with the offense last season. And they ran a very similar blocking scheme to former head coach Anthony Lynn, but uh, being that outside zone blocking scheme. But they ran way more tighter formations. And matter of fact, they were uh, first in the NFL in terms of usage. They, they ran a bunch of a bunch of bunch formations they uh, incorporate a lot more play action uh much more motion and they just played very up tempo to keep uh, the defense on its heels tired uh tr try to keep uh certain personnels on the field and much like i anticipated last season with this deep dive series mike williams saw a huge uptick in volume and targets and benefited from a plush a plethora of just like rail mesh and like cross concepts they uh utilized and exploited his the, the size of his frame where they started mixing um stick and uh flat concepts they got their playmakers out in space and in, in keenan allen and austin eckler i mean this offense was just so fast paced and it also did a really good job of keeping justin herbert clean despite having a very uh lack for a better term piss poor right side of the offensive line as the pressure rate was 19.3 percent that was tied for the sixth best in the nfl they were second in play action which play action helps a lot when your offensive line is a bit sus in areas and i mean the biggest scrutiny when it came to this offense last year was the fourth down calls but they were really good in that aspect as a 64.7 percent completion rate or conversion rate was the fourth best in the nfl and in all honesty them going for a bunch on fourth down didn't indicate that they were bad on third down as their conversion rate was the sixth best in the nfl so i think when it came down to those fourth down play calls a lot of people had problems with where they would call that it's, it's, it's some parts it would be like okay you're doing it at your own 30 35 that's a bit sus but I think my problems really came from the actual play calls on fourth down. I don't mind the aggressiveness. I actually like it. And I really think that they should stay the course, especially with all the improvements they have made on defense. But we'll get we'll get to the defense in a second. Let's talk about this, this offense primarily as they return uh they return for all intents and purposes, uh, the same playmakers as they did last year. Mike Williams, expect, like really the only thing that slowed down Mike Williams was, I can't remember if it was a knee injury, it was some sort of leg injury, but slowed him down halfway through the season. I know my fantasy football uh, nuts out there could understand that. But uh, the, the dude was dominant. We saw a very good uh, play from Josh Palmer down the stretch. Uh, Keenan Allen was Keenan Allen. Doing Keenan Allen things is just being being good. Uh, I think now we'll see Jalen uh, Guyton just be used more used as that situational vertical guy. Like, okay, we're, this is something we've schemed up for you. Go and do the vertical thing, baby. Uh, outside of that, though, I mean, it's not all that impressive. But, I mean, those are still, I think, four good receivers that they have. They had DeAndre Carter. That's I think that's more of a special team move. Uh, Joe Reed, kind of the same facet. He's more of a return specialist uh they do have jason moore does he make the roster this year i don't know we'll see uh they add 
at tight end, I think uh, Gerald Everett, another guy that uh, Brandon Staley's familiar with, I think think is huge. Like this cat, uh, yeah, he, he's been like all right over the past few seasons since kind of breaking out for the Rams. But I, I think coming here, man, is a really good pickup. Uh, Donald Parham's there. Uh, Trey McKinney, more of a blocking guy. So like, uh, it's good there. Say Surratt moved to tight end. Wow, that doesn't surprise me, man. That, that dude is. Uh, S L O W S L O. Don't know if he makes a roster though. Uh, it's really kind of up for grabs if they keep a fourth tight end. Uh, who would it be? But no, nah, I really like that. I mean, honestly, they probably stick with uh, three tight ends and a uh, H back or fullback, as they got Xander Horvath listed as. Uh, ahead of the depth chart of Gabe Neighbors. I don't know. That's going to be interesting. That really will be interesting. Uh, or that, though, in all honesty, like, dude was kind of a physical specimen. So, if he ends up uh, the guy that they keep, man, that's going to be kind of dope. Uh, Austin Eckler, he's going to continue to do Austin Eckler themes, be a menace in both the uh, rushing and pass game. Uh, they add Isaiah Spiller for a little bit of just consistency because that's been a big problem when it came to this offense. Like, there's no back there in tow that could actually alleviate uh, pressure from Austin Eckler. Like there, there's there was really no guy that could come on and you could like realistically expect like okay we need to account for this guy. It's like uh, guys like J Joshua Kelly and Larry Roundtree were just kind of like. Meh. Meh. Like, it wasn't all that great. So, Isaiah Spiller, good addition. Very solid back. Good size as well. So, I like that for him being the guy that could kind of, like, come in and take some of the volume off of Austin Eckler. Uh, of course, looking at the other cats that got there, they got uh, Kevin Marks. That was a uh, Buffalo running back, right? Yeah, it was. Uh, probably doesn't make the squad. Letty Brown. Uh, he's kind of like a TJ Yeldon. Uh, does a lot of things well, but real master of none uh, out of West Virginia. But I like the additions. Well, addition to the offensive line of Zion Johnson. Obviously, that fills a big role where right guard when, uh, who was it? Uh, Saf was it Saffold? Not Saffold. Uh, Schofield? Schofield? Oh, let, 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 let's look. I'm really, really bad with names. Yeah, uh, Schofield. Uh, when he went down, like, uh, well, actually, to be fair, it was Abushi who initially went down, but Schofield, like, you, you had a very, like, solid vet, but really, let's be honest, the right tackle position was a nightmare, uh, when it came to Storm Norton. Trey Pipkins did some nice things down, like, the stretch at left tackle last year. He was all right, and they're kind of hoping that he ends up winning the right tackle job because Storm Norton, you can't go into the year with Storm Norton, man. You already saw. I think you've seen enough. So, so Trey Pipkins hopefully gets a job, like a guy they've been developing what feels like forever. But uh, Zion Johnson, very good addition. Of course, they got Corey Lindsey, Matt Filer, and uh, Rashawn Slater, who were just wonderful last year. They also added Jamari Sawyer, who's, again, another guy that's probably just more guard depth. Uh, but that did play left tackle there at Georgia, so... I don't know. Maybe they try try his hand at right tackle if things don't go well with Pipkins. I don't know. That's something we'll see. We'll clap good depth. So, for all intents and purposes, I thought they did a good job of uh, added a, a good addition to the offensive line. They bring in a tight end familiar with Staley that is just he's a wonderful athlete a guy that really can produce after the catch so i expect this offense to be much of like last year but maybe a little more successful on fourth down but even if they aren't this defense is going to see a huge improvement so let's go ahead and get into the defensive things here with uh if you didn't know now you know ronaldo hill is the dc him and staley actually uh reunite here let me get the yeah there we go uh, i want to get that nice and centered for you so you can get a good look at the defensive uh, depth chart but him it's uh 
Staley reunite. They both used to work under Vic Fangio back in Denver. So they reunited last season. Last season wasn't really, a, I think, a good... Uh, I don't think it was a good indication of how this defense is going to be because, like, yeah, the results weren't ideal. The defense wasn't all that good. And to be fair, this defense was moving from a 4-3 to a 3-4. They lost a lot of talent in free agency. I mean, shoot, they lost Melvin Ingram. That was a big loss. And, I mean, to be fair, they did, like, last offseason, they didn't really add many guys via free agency or in the draft i mean back in 20 uh 2021 they had nine draft picks uh four on day one and day two and three of those went to the offensive end of things so yeah it shouldn't be a surprise that this defense wasn't going to be that good i mean the run defense lacked big bodies on the interior outside of uh was it linval joseph who was a 33 year old vet at that time so yeah the the run defense it, it sucked it was piss poor but they added guy uh they added a lot of guys to that interior off uh defensive line uh one being sebastian joseph day a guy staley very familiar with they add uh they added uh Morgan Fox. They added Austin Johnson. They drafted uh, Otito Ogabana. Uh, Oga Otito. I'm going to call you Otito, but he's going to be more of a pass rushing nose tackle. So they added guys to that interior that actually fit that interior. They added Khalil Mack next to freaking Joey Bosa. That's scary. They also had a very versatile piece in Kyle Van Noy. They also brought in some studs in the secondary in the form of J.C. Callahan. In, uh, not J.C. Callahan, uh, J.C. Jackson, Bryce Callahan. I combined them. How crazy of a corner would that be if you combine them? But they added those guys. Speaking of Callahan, a guy very familiar with Vic Fangio's schemes uh, or Vic Fangio's uh, corners and cover two concepts, whether it was in the slot or on the outside. So you have so much versatility there. So, like, yeah, there is a big reason to expect this defense to turn around and not be the same defense we saw last year that was uh, third in points allowed, 10th in yards allowed. Like, this defense is going to be so much better and this Chargers team, yeah, they're all in on, hey, let's get the most we can from Justin Herbert's rookie contract. So let's go ahead, get into the in, into things here. As Let's look at the defensive line first and foremost. Uh, again, they add Austin Jackson. They add Sebastian Joseph Day. They add actually a pretty solid uh, depth guy in Christian uh, Covington. Uh, Otito, like I said, he's going to be more of this like third down pass rush and nose tackle. Uh, they added Morgan Fox, who was actually really good for Carolina. So they added a ton. Jerry Tillery is he's he's there. He's still there. Oh boy, yay! But yeah, this defensive line looks so much better. Joey Bosa, you got Cleo Mack, uh, Kyle Van Noy again, versatile. He's going to be in the rotation there. Uh, maybe we see a little bit of Chris Rump, man. I was a huge Chris Rump fan. This guy was putting on weight. Try and get bigger. Maybe he gets utilized in a rotation manner this uh, this next season. Uh, going to the secondary. The secondary looks like it's going to be freaking studded with uh, you got J.C. Jackson, Bryce Callahan, whether he's on the uh, outside or the slot. Asani Samuel Jr., a guy who's got that slot versatility as well, who had some ups and downs his rookie year, but he was a rookie, a guy I was very high on coming out of the draft. So you get a guy like Michael Davis, who's like, he's fine, but now he's a depth option. I freaking like that. Matter of fact, I love it. Even uh, Tavon Campbell, who showed in spots that is like, eh, he's fine. He, he's a guy that be a solid depth piece. So, like, I'm very, very excited. Shoot, they got Brand. I didn't know they had Brand uh, Brandon Sebastian. This guy was one of the most targeted quarters in college football over the like past two to three years there at Boston College. But, hey, also, uh, their safeties kind of sick. Derwin James, if you haven't heard of him, he's kind of good. Uh, Nazir Adderley kind of had a coming out party last year. This is a guy that could definitely be a center fielder. But, he, again, in, the, in this type of scheme, he's going to be a guy that just could cover a lot of ground real quick. So, uh, added JT Woods was a nice mix. I heard he kind of had a rough go at camp uh, thus far. 
but I mean, you know, you know what he is. He's a guy that can cover a lot of ground, good length, good movement skills, uh, showed a good nose for the football. Uh, Alohi uh, Gilbert, more of a box safety in that regard. Maybe a guy that could be a dime backer because we'll get to the linebacker position. Ah, I'll just say that. So I'm feeling really good about the secondary. Let's go ahead and actually get to the linebacker position as uh, Drew Tranquil, a uh, guy that really stepped up, was a very good uh, last year. Uh, he's actually a really good special teamer as well. So he adds a lot of uh, depth, a lot of versatility in that regard. Uh, listen, Kenneth Murray, dude, he's as good as gone. I'll just say that. Like, last year he struggled so much that they tried to play him at edge. He was even worse. Like, I don't, if this guy is started, I don't know how. I don't know why. Uh, I think if any, like, okay, it's gonna, I think it's really an open debate who probably plays that other linebacker spot because I, I get it that uh, Troy Reader is actually a cat that Staley's familiar with. But they have Nick Neiman, who a guy who, yeah, didn't see a lot of defensive snaps last season, but was a very good special teamer. Uh, but I, I think he's a guy that can maybe step up into the role. I feel encouraged about that. Uh, even if it's Troy Reader, he's like, okay. That's about all the good I could say about Troy uh, Reader. But yeah, no, nah, like, it, honestly, if, like, you're, if you're the weak spot of your off or your defense is going to be yeah our like second linebacker because again i feel really good about uh drew tranquil he actually showed uh showed showed out pretty well last year if you uh go back even in coverage like he was very solid he might be again one of those guys that's like more of a uh minimizer in coverage not really a guy that could produce splash plays that's fine that works out well you know what he was good at he was a solid tackler a good a guy that could probably be a good run stuffer so so I'm feeling I'm feeling extraordinary about this defense. I think this defense is so much more improved. Like these aren't like just like oh yeah they added a lot of guys. Like these are significant additions. Bryce Callahan, JC JC Jackson, Khalil Mack. Those are huge, huge, huge additions. So I'm excited. Uh, hey, just see just see our Taylor, Wake Forest, right? Hey, look at that. Look at that. Don't know if he makes a squad, though. But uh, let's go ahead and get into my projected starters. And I do this based on saps. Who's going to see the field the most? I can give two craps about your base offenses, base defenses. I want to know who's going to be on the field most of the time. So let's go ahead and get into that sucker. Starting with the offense. Of course, Justin Herbert, Austin Eckler, Mike Williams, Josh Palmer, and then Keenan Allen. Yeah, for all intents and purposes, this is their slot guy. They love Keenan Allen. He's the one typically getting the most snaps in the slot. And then we got Gerald Everett going to the offensive line. Rashad Slater, Matt Fire, Corey Lindsay, Zion Johnson, and then Trey Pipkins. That's going to be the biggest question mark, I think, uh, on the offensive line. Looking at the defense, Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, Sebastian Joseph Day, you got Austin Johnson. Uh, you got Drew Tranquil. I'm going to go on a limb, say Nick Neiman. He ends up winning that linebacker two job and does a stellar, stellar job at that. J.C. Jackson, Asante Samuel Jr., Bryce Callahan, Derwin James, Nazir Adderley. That defense looks like it's going to be at the top 10 this season. So let's go over how I think they will do because I got them at 13 and 14. Four. I think they're going to have a stellar season despite playing in probably the toughest division in all of the NFL. Let's go ahead with the game by a game, dude. My nose is stuffy, but it's all right. We'll power through. All right, so they get their bye in week eight. They open the year against the Raiders at home, so I think that's winnable. Uh, face of the Chiefs, it kind of depends what Chiefs team will We'll see, but uh, the Chargers, I think, will be very competitive with the Chiefs, especially with uh, their defense just being all kinds of upgraded. Uh, so, yeah, I really, I really see the Chargers. Matter of fact, I have the Chargers go in four and two in the division. Uh, they get, they get, they get the Jags, the Texans, uh, probably the Sean Wat uh, Watson list 
Cleveland Browns, uh, Denver Broncos, and then you get a nice, uh, I would say, a nice cushion game. A nice, uh, you get to face the Seahawks. They're going to be one of the worst teams this season going into your bye. And then you open up the bye with the Falcons, which is another team like, eh, they could surprise te- uh, people this year, but realistically, I don't think they will. Uh, the Niners, Niners are always a good squad. Uh, they will now have Trey Lance uh, headed the uh, lineup, so uh, we'll see. Got the Chargers getting their win back against the Chiefs. Beat of the Cardinals. Uh, lose it here to the uh, Raiders. Uh, like I said, I think the division is going to be tough. I actually have the Chargers winning two games on the Broncos. Uh, beat it by Dolphins. That hurts, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, Titans Colts. These are going to be two very tough games down the stretch. Simply because those are the two teams that are, those two teams are going to be vying for their division. They're going to be exceptionally close to one another. So I think maybe not both those games are losable. Well, I think both those games are losable, but the likelihood of they losing both those games isn't very high. But yeah, it is what it is. Got the beat of the Rams and then uh, beat of the Broncos in the uh, final game of the season. So yeah, I think this team. I think they're poised to make a run through the playoffs. Uh, I I really like what they got going on. I'm excited to see them, and everyone should now know who I have winning the Super Bowl per se. Uh, and we'll see that video. I'm thinking Thursday or Wednesday. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, that's it for the video. Go ahead, do the YouTube thing. It's been a blast as always. But until next time. You be easy, my friends. Later.